Well, it's good to be here tonight. It ain't every preacher that can say, I fell down in this church. <laughs> you say, well, I didn't know if you say anything about that. Everybody else is saying about it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm doing great. I really am. I had gallbladder took out. I lost uh, almost 64 pounds, and that didn't hurt me. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I've not felt this good in years. And I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for it. I could look out and see my good friend Mike, his Brenda, good people. Love them to death. I'm going to preach tonight on, it's my testimony, but it's the first message I ever preached in my life. And I've preached it a number of times. In Isaiah chapter number 40, I'm going to wind up on the Roman road. If you uh, probably know where that is. See, I was prepared for you that time. I knew you all would stand up. <laughs> Isaiah chapter number 40, and this was my life verse when God called me to preach. But they shall wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Our Father, thank you, Lord, tonight for this opportunity to come and be in this church. I thank you for this pastor. Lord, I pray for him. I lift him up. Lord, what a, uh, he's got a, a load, and I know, dear Lord, that any pastor that's been in the building program knows what kind of a, of a deal it is. Lord, it's, it, it, it's beautiful. This is a gorgeous church. And, Lord, thank you for Brother Charles. I pray that you help him. And just help Brother Lawson to always know, dear Jesus, you'll never leave him nor forsake him. That you'll be with him even till the end of the world. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to get to come and preach your precious word. I love you tonight. I love this church. And forgive us where we pay and come short of your glory. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Many years ago, 1966, 67, or 68, somewhere in there, I left Knoxville, went to Peoria, Illinois, and I was going up there to be an insulator to cover pipe, and uh, I, I did become an insulator, and um, one night I was living just right outside of Peoria in what's called Metamora, Illinois. I was laying on the couch and had was smoking a pale mail cigarette, no shirt on, just laying there in pants and watching gun smoke on television. I mean, hey, that was the thing to do. Then there's a knock come on the door. And uh, opened the door up, he said, uh, Hello there, my name's Gerald Thompson. I'm pastor of Bayview Gardens Baptist Church. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> he could have said, no, I won't say that. But I said, come in. He said, I was just in the area and wanted to come by. Now, he was in the area because he was sent there. That's why he was in the area. So he came in, he sat down, and he said, I just come by to invite you to church. To our church, Bayview Gardens Baptist Church. I said, well, that, thank you. I will not be there. <laughs> he said, I'd like to know why. I said, listen, all my life I've been made to go to church. And for the first time in my life, I'm, a, I'm my own boss, got my own two little boys, and we're not going to go if I don't want to go. And I knew he wasn't going to sit still for that. That would be like telling Charles Lawson something like that and him not saying nothing. I know something was coming. And so he talked to me and he said, are you saved? If, I said, well, sure I'm saved. I've answered that question all my life. I was raised in church. 
I know what time the youth meet on Thursday night. I know what church is on Wednesday. I know what Sunday morning, Sunday night is because that's where we always went. And he said, uh, well, let me ask you something. I really wished you would come one time anyway, just, just one time. And I said, well, I said, uh, I said, I would, but I said, honest, in all honesty, I said, uh, uh, I've played church all my life, and I had. I, I'd come up, and, and, and uh, I'd sit back in the congregation, and, and if I saw somebody was coming to me, Brother Charles, I'd go out the back door. That's the days years ago when they used to come back and get you. <laughs> you said, Lord, what church were you going to? It was a Baptist church. But uh, I came in, and uh, we were sitting there, and, and he said, uh, oh, he said, well, can I pray? I said, well, I would never tell a preacher he couldn't pray because, you know, I won't tell a preacher uh, or lie to a preacher or, or, or tell him you can't pray. I'd figure uh, uh, you'd die automatically if you'd done that. <laughs> well, when God called me to preach, I know better than that. I've been lied to and everything else. Yeah. But... He, went, he started praying. And you know what he did? He made me sorry that I told him no, that I wouldn't come to his church in that prayer, and I couldn't say a thing in the world but sit there and take it. <laughs> he said, uh, amen. And I, he said, I sure wished you'd come. I said, well, I'll come Sunday morning. But that's it. He said, that's all I had, just come one time. And he said, now, before I leave, I want to tell you something. And I've never forgot this. I use it today. I've never, ever forgot it. I may never see you again, but I want you to know one thing. I love you in the Lord. I never had nobody tell me that they loved me in the Lord. And I thought, I said, I'll be there. He said, you sure? I said, I'll be right there. He said, now I want you to make sure. I thought he was trying to talk me out of coming now that I told him I was going. <laughs> and we got up that morning and what wouldn't go wrong did go wrong. What couldn't go wrong happened. Got on, and we had to stop me and buy shoe strings for one of the boys' shoes. I will never forget that. <laughs> and I got to the church, and I got out and sat. We, we walked in the, the doors. To, and by the way, your church is gorgeous. I love this church, outside and inside. But the doors was white, just like these back here. And I walked in the doors, and when I walked in, I made a right turn right there on the back. Right on the corner on the back. So if anybody came to me, I'd go, whew, out the door. Brother Thompson preached the message. Don't know what he preached, but I do know this. The invitation was given. The Holy Spirit said, Sonny, you're lost and you're going to hell. That totally shocked me, Brother Charles. It did. But Lawson, I'm telling you, I was shocked. Yeah. Been in church all my life, and I never had to worry about that. I'm too busy writing in song books, and, and just one. I, I wrote one time, and Dad called me. I never done it no more. But I never forget. I sat there, and I sat there, and I sat there. I said, well, maybe he'll, 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 he'll leave me alone now. I knew what the Holy Spirit was. I've been around that much. And Sonny said, then, then the Holy Spirit said, Sonny, you're lost. You're lost, and, and you need to get saved. And I stepped out, and because I got tired of doing this, I was holding the song book up. I wasn't reading the song book. I was looking over the top of it to see if anybody was coming after me. And if they had, I would lay the book down, shut it, and I'd go out the door. But as I stepped out and come forward, I will never forget it. I came up and knelt down, and Carl Ridings, the song director, 
turned around and come over and got his Bible, knelt down and took the King James Version of the Bible and showed me how to be saved, how to be born again, and how to go to heaven. That's the first time that had ever happened. I'd come up a number of times. I've, I've had men, you know, get down and pray, and somebody say, well, you pray through. Hold, hang on. Turn loose. Let go. I, I, I was confused as a termite in the yo-yo when you go up some of the altars. He took the Bible and he showed me how to be saved, the Roman road. I got involved, and like I said, I wasn't going to, but I got involved, <laughs> and it wasn't long that I was working in the bus ministry. It wasn't long I was visiting. Wasn't wrong. It wasn't long that one morning I stood up and I surrendered to, to preach the gospel. That scared me to death. You know, the first time I ever stood up and gave my testimony in church, they had to turn the microphone up so they could hear me. That's hard to believe it. But... I surrendered to preach, and I won't never forget Don and Ruth Pilati, precious people, loved the Lord. He come up to me, and he told me I, as we was going out one Sunday, he said, hey, he said, uh, say God called you to preach? I said, you better believe he called me to preach. I'm ready. I just didn't know how ready I was going to have to be. And uh, Don said, well, said, I've got a prison ministry that I preach at. And I said, well, I won't ever forget it. Can they get out? <laughs> <laughs> I figured if they could get out, I could get in, you know. So he said, no, I want you to come. So we went up there that morning. I won't ever forget it. And, and we stopped downstairs, and, and we emptied our pockets, and they frisked us all down and everything. And uh, a deputy took us upstairs to number two, the second floor. Won't never forget this. And as I got off the elevator, Ruth played. There was a there was a brick wall, a blonde brick wall, about ten foot long and twelve foot tall, right behind. As you get off the elevator, you're looking at it. Ruth Pilati was standing there with her her guitar. It looked like it was this long and she was this tiny, you know, a little tiny thing. And this is what she sung. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come there is still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. And Don said, Amen. Okay, Ruth, you're going back downstairs. The deputy took her back downstairs. Me, I, Don was standing here. I was standing here. Now, where this block wall, brick wall stopped, there was about this much area of solid iron bars. They were one inch in diameter. Inside was about four picnic tables sitting end to end. And some men run around in that. Had fans going, the TV going. And down this side, after you get inside, but you didn't get inside, thank God. You did, after you got inside, there was a row of sails. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. And I stood there, and, and Don said, okay, let's do it. You take that side, I'll take this side. I said, whoa, wait a minute. You asked me to come with you. He said, yes, I did, to preach. Remember? Yes, I'm ready. I was scared. He said, what do you do? He said, just go over and tell them you're going to preach. Now, here's a fellow that, that had to have a microphone to, to preach. <laughs> I went over there, and I know my knees was knocking. I was totally scared to death. About 15 men in there. 
And I said, I'm here to preach for you. Ah, oh, shut up. I thought, boy, Lord, this is going to go over good. <laughs> go peddle that stuff somewhere else. And I was too totally scared. I said, God, you're going to have to help me. You know, Dr. Earl Clark, up, uh, my college up in, in Kentucky where I graduated Bible college, taught, used to tell me, don't ever put God on the spot just because you are. I was fixing to put him on the spot. God, I need help. To myself, I prayed. And out of cell number one, there walked the biggest human being of a man I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to call him Bob. That's not his real name. A black gentleman. He come out of there, and he couldn't walk out of that cell door in there without turning sideways. He come out there, and he said, "Shut up! I want to hear what he's got to say." You could have heard a mouse walk on cotton. <laughs> <laughs> and he turned around, and he never called me. Go ahead, Rev. <laughs> and he turned around and walked back in. I thought, well, if they got upset over telling them I was going to preach, they'll really like what I'm going to tell them the subject was. Subject of my first message was, you can't walk with God and run with the devil. They loved that. As I stood there, I knew one message, Brother Lawson, the Roman road. Yeah, now, that's all I knew. Yeah. Carl Wright showed me that on the altar. And so I just talked to him. I said, well, now, first thing you're going to have to do is realize that you're a sinner. You're going to realize that First of all, that God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the Bible, John 3, 16. And I still didn't have their attention. But of course, I don't think they really wanted my attention. And I told them, I said, uh, I said, okay. Not only that, and I was stuttered and stammering, I couldn't tell you my name, much less what scripture I was going to. And I turned to Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23. I said, now this is the only one that I know. This is the only message that I know. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I talked to him about how that, that uh, we all have sinned. The Bible tells us that not only did they need to realize that uh, God loved them, not only did they need to realize that all men are sinners, but then they have to realize that all sin has to be paid for. In Romans chapter number uh, 6 and verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I have took this very message, or these very Roman road, and led a lot of people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it seems like you can tell them verse after verse, lead them and lead them, and when it comes right down to it, now, would you bow your head with me and ask Jesus to come into your heart and get saved? Would you do that? That... That seems like eternity sometime when you're waiting for them to say yes or waiting for them to say no. I look back there, and there was four of them sitting on a picnic bench. They had already reached up there and turned the fan off. It was huge. And they turned the television off, and it was quiet. And they could hear me. I, I, was, I was surprised. And I told them, I said, you know, I said, the gift that God gave us is His Son, Jesus Christ. 
And he died on the, sin, on, on the cross just for your sins and my sins Amen. because we're lost and we're, we're going to a devil's hell. Amen. Never looked up. I thought, well, this is going like water off a duck's back, but I'm going to keep right on. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, now, whatever you want me to do, it's just like he said, preach. <laughs> That's what I want you to do. Amen. You know, I always thought some of the fellows, there was five of us surrendered to preach at one time at the church. And uh, one of them said, you know, you don't preach loud like I do, you know. I like what the old preacher in Kentucky said, you know, he preached a little red hand, came in the boy, he said, Mom said, God's called me to preach. She said, really? He said, preach a little bit for me. She said, he said, the little red hen ran around the barn. She said, no, God hadn't called you to preach. You, you need to go back home. You need to retry this thing, you know. He come back and said, Mom, I think I got it. And he, she said, okay. He said, the little red hen huh, ran huh, around huh, the barn. She said, well, God did call you to preach. <laughs> There's loud preachers. There's soft preachers. But right now, I didn't know what kind of preacher I was. I was a preacher standing in front of a bunch of men that I knew good and well could care less about what I was saying. But I was forgetting one thing. God put me there. Well, I get, kept, I explained that verse. And then I told him, I said, well, you need to realize that Christ pray, paid for our sins in Romans chapter 5, verse number 8. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Had it not been for him, We'd be going to a devil's hell. Jesus made the difference. And I kept talking. I used the illustration Brother, Brother Carl Ridings used when he was kneeling and praying with me. And I said, last of all, you need to realize that Christ is our Savior. In Romans chapter number 10, and the Bible tells us here in Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said, isn't that great? And they said nothing. Never moved. And I said, Lord, you sent me here. And Lord, you told me what to preach. And Lord, I preached it. And I looked back there and I said, now we've got some New Testaments here and we've got the Roman road highlighted in yellow and you're welcome to them because Jesus will save you right now if you'll just step out and come. Brother Lawson, I didn't know why God wanted me there. Of all the preachers in the world, those preachers over at church, you know, they all got up and they said, you don't preach this and you don't preach loud. They have to turn the microphone up to hear you. Maybe God just called you to sing. You know, I quit, pre I quit singing for a long time for that because I wanted God to call me to preach. Yeah, amen. But you know what I started doing? I started doing them both. <laughs> well, two of them stepped out and come forward. They couldn't, they, when they come up out to the bars, I couldn't touch them. There was a deputy right here at this brick wall that I was telling you about. And I could reach the Bible to them, and they could reach their hand out, and they could take the New Testament. And I, the other one come up, and I done him the same way. And then I took my Bible, and they opened theirs, and they followed with me one at a time for the Scripture. And they prayed and received Christ as their personal Savior. Amen. Preacher, I was old way out of line. I may not sound like Billy Graham or, 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 or uh, uh, any other loud preacher, but I guarantee you what, inside I was shouting glory. <laughs> then I said this. They turned and went back to the bench, and they said, I said, uh, anybody else? I was getting bold now. They could hear me. I was a little louder. 
I knew they couldn't get to me, you know. I said, anybody else want to come except Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I waited, and I waited. And then out of cell one came Bob. He come out. He made a turn. He said, hey, Rev, I will never forget it. His cheeks were chubby. He was chubby, chubby all over. He was huge. He said, hey, Rev, would you show me how to be saved? He cried. prayed. He stuck his hand out there. And boy, I'll tell you what, I was never so scared to grab a hand in all my days. And that sheriff looked at me and he said, he's all right. I got his hand. And I said, now, he went over to Burgess. Now, can you follow me in prayer? He said, I'd like to pray my own. I said, help yourself. <laughs> He said, Lord, I don't know much, but I know I need to be saved. Come into my heart and save me that I'll have a home Amen. in heaven. Amen. I said, okay. And I prayed, thank you, Lord. You said, whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. He has. And, and Lord, he, he's, uh, uh, now I said, B -b Bob, what happened to you? I'd stutter because he was such a huge man. I mean, he was, I saw him twisting them bars away just coming over and over. <laughs> and he said, Brother Sonny, I didn't get saved because I want to get out of this jail. He said, that's not why I got saved. He said, Brother Sonny, I didn't get saved over what's going to happen to me in the morning. That's not why I got saved. I said, well, Bob, what's going to happen in the morning? He said, in the morning, they're coming to get me. They're going to take me to another prison, and they're going to put me to death. It's still... Brother Lawson breaks my heart. And I said, Bob, he said, what did he do? Didn't want to know. Wasn't none of my business what he done. Fact of the matter is, he looked at me, and I won't ever forget what he said. He said, Rev, don't feel sorry for me. And he told me five words. I've never forgot them. The punishment fits the crime. He took that little Bible. He said, I'll have this read by in the morning, that little New Testament. I said, that's good. He said, what do I do now? I said, tell everybody you meet about the Lord Jesus Christ. That sheriff come over there. He said, he called him by name. He knew him. He said, I just got saved. He said, well, buddy, I'm glad for you. You know what? If you die lost without Jesus Christ, that's a crime. That's a, that's a shame. Isn't, is that not a shame for people to die lost without Jesus Christ? Here's a young man, and I was young then, God saved. God called me to preach. Sent me up to a jail to win three men and one of them was going to die and was put to death. You know, I believe with all of my heart in Luke chapter number 15, 
verse number four. I'm going to read just a little bit right here. Why is it important? Why is it important to go try to do God's will? You say, maybe they didn't mean it. That may, that's not up to me. God said they meant it. God meant it. That man, Bob knew just as sure as he prayed that prayer that God was going to save him. He didn't want to get out of jail. He didn't want to dread. He, he didn't want to go do what he's fixing to do, Brother Lawson. He knew. He said, the punishment fits the crime. And he said, let me tell you something. He said, I'm saved and going to heaven. And tears running down his face. He grabbed my hand and one, one, his two hands was like grabbing one of mine. One here and one here. And he just cried. He said, would you pray with me, preacher? No, he, he didn't say Rev, our preacher. He said, would you pray with me, Rev? I said, let's do it. I prayed, thank God. And I turned around to walk off. And as I turned around and walked off, I never will forget, he, he looked at my, my, my Bible and he put it next to his chest. He said, I've got some reading to do. Now watch this. Look in Luke chapter number 15, verse number 4. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he found it, till he find it? And when he hath found it, he laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, and saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Let me tell you something. One of the best things in the world that could ever happen to you is you could realize that Jesus Christ left heaven to die on the cross for our sins. That's easy enough to do. I was watching the, the Christmas play here tonight. Lord, how many Christmas plays I've watched over as a pastor. <laughs> Preacher, would you do the speaking part? You do the speaking part. <laughs> I've done the speaking part. But I was sitting here watching them tonight and one of the little girls and boys coming off through here, and they were just bouncing. One was a shepherd, and they were saying, what are you, and what are you, and what are you, what are you, you know? And, and uh, I, I, I thought, train a child up in the way it should go, and when it is old, it will not dark none of them. Hey, you know what? You may be the one that God puts his hand upon to go out, and there's lost people all over this countryside that's dying and going to hell. Let me tell you, we're living in a rough world. I mean, we're living in a, world, a real rough world. But just as sure as you're alive and breathing, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I started going back to church. I went back a new man that day. I went back to church and Pastor put me over the junior church. Whew. Bus kids. I had 125 of them. And had people to help me. And I thought, Lord, have mercy, I'll not be able to do this. You know, every time I'd, I'd, I'd do something like that, try to back up or try to get out of something, God said, Bob, would you? <laughs> I don't know. I know this. When I got, when I got saved, at that altar, I'm not talking about turning over a new leaf. There's a lot of folks turn over a new leaf and say, all right, I'm ready to go now. They come in and, and you know, I, when I got up off that altar, I was ready to charge hell with a water pistol. That's what O.F. Blue used to say. <laughs> yeah. I was. I was excited about what God was doing and what he'd done for me and how he changed my life. And I knew the only way that I'd ever be happy Brother Lawson, get in this book yes, sir, and win people to Jesus. Amen. What about you? Just between you and me. Is there somebody tonight that the Holy Spirit has worked on you and worked on you and worked on you to go witness to? 
go witness to them is because you're afraid you might not be able to answer the right questions. Like Brother Thompson used to tell me, he said, just tell them what Jesus done for you. That'll do it. Just tell them what Jesus done for you. Only you know tonight. Only you know. I know that you can't walk with God and run with the devil. You can't do both of them. Matter of fact, one of the boys, that, one, of the, one of the two that God saved come back up there. He said, you know what? I know what you mean down by walking with God and running with the devil. He said, I've run with the devil for a lot of years. And I said, well, you can say that. I couldn't say that. <laughs> and he laughed. Let me tell you something. Get serious with God. There's people that's lost and dying and going to hell. You'd be surprised how many people want to be saved and would listen if you just help them, if you just show them, if you just show them. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a moment, let me ask you something. Maybe you're here tonight, and you'd say, Brother Benson, Holy Spirit spoke to my heart tonight. Maybe you're here, and you know who I was talking about that you need to go witness to. Maybe you're afraid of them. Maybe you're afraid you can't do the right word and say the right words. Or maybe you're here tonight and you'd say, Brother Vincent, I want you to pray for me. Holy Spirit deal with, dealt with me tonight about this person. Now, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to point you out, and I will not embarrass you. Is there one that would say, Brother Vincent, Holy Spirit spoke to me tonight. I know exactly what I need to do. Would you pray with me tonight so I'll have the, the uh, freedom and the power to go do it through the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you just look up at me and look right back down? God bless you. God bless the hearts all over this auditorium, Pastor. Let me ask you something, all right? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for being honest. You say, I can't do it. God bless you. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. They make tracks for that reason. You say, preacher, you don't understand. I'm afraid. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm going to go. And I want to talk to these people. Lord, you, you show me the place. You show me the time. You show me how. And let me tell you something. He will. Now, before I pray, is there anybody else that, Brother Vincent, Holy Spirit spoke to my heart about tonight, about some things I need to do, whether it's witness and so and whatever. This is a big auditorium. You've got a lot of people to bring in here. Anyone else, just look up and look right back down. Anyone else, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for being honest. There is heads all over this auditorium. All right. You say, Brother Benson, what if I don't win them? I told you of two men that was there and Bob that was in cell number one. But there was five others that never moved an inch. But let me ask you something. What would have happened if I hadn't have went? Brother Pilate, Brother Don Pilate couldn't have got number two and number one. He, wasn't, he didn't have enough time. And he always went to number one. I went because he never had a preacher to go to number two. But God knew what was going on. And you let me tell you something. He'll help you. He'll help you. What would you do? What would have I done if I hadn't have asked Bob that question and come to find out he was killed? Oh, my. Oh, my. Heavenly Father, now I've preached what you told me to preach tonight. They're going to come get a song ready, dear Lord. And I just pray that right now, Lord, I thank you that you give me liberty to preach here tonight. Lord, I shared something with this church tonight 
that I don't share. This is just the third time I've ever preached this particular testimony message and using Bob. Now I pray, dear God, for all those men and those women and those boys and girls that raised their head. Holy Spirit spoke to them tonight. Now I pray that they'll step out and they'll come and they'll kneel at this old-fashioned altar and, Lord, they'll just get a hold of you and they'll leave here tonight on far for you and, Lord, ready to build church ready to go win people to Jesus somebody needs the Lord somebody needs to be saved and it's important that these people do what needs to be done we love you in Christ's name amen would you stand with me please with your heads bowed and your eyes closed as you play softly while heads are bowed and you raised your head why don't you come up here right now? Just step out from your bench. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Nothing will keep me from doing what I need to be doing for Jesus. God's already told you who he wants you to witness to. Done told you who he wants you to talk to. If you're here tonight, you say, Brother Benson, I, I don't know for sure if I died right this very instant, I'd be going to heaven. Then I want you to step out and come forward. Myself or the pastor would be happy to kneel with you, take the Bible and show you from the scriptures what it means to be born again, what it means to be saved. Now here's what you need to do. Step out. She's playing a verse. Don't let the devil get victory over you tonight. Say, I'm going to go. I'm going to step out and go. It don't make no difference what anybody thinks. I'm going to go. I'm going to step out and go because I want to do what God wants me to do. It may be a friend. It may be a brother, an aunt, or an uncle. It may be a friend. Let me tell you something. Do you realize that the Holy Spirit has pointed those people out to you tonight? He's pointed them out to you tonight for a reason for a reason 